Uh, hello guys, so this is what we are going to be building. So you can see that uh, this node just has a start and then we have this node called chatbot and then we have an end. Okay, so basically you can think of this chatbot node as just a model, just an LLM that sort of like, you know, uh, takes in a human message from the start. I mean, um, when we invoke it, we pass the initial state, right? So yeah, it just takes in the initial state and then it passes it to the chatbot node processes it and then sends it uh, and then ends the graph. That's it. Very simple. So this, this basic chatbot does not have any memory. It does not have any tools either. Right? So these are the, some of the new things that we'll be learning. We'll learn about another method. So far we've been using the app.invoke method, right? We'll also learn about, you know, there's another method called stream. Uh, we'll learn about that. We'll learn about, you know, looping in the chat. And finally, we can also use uh, a free llama model uh, using the grok interface. Okay, so uh, if you do not know, Llama is an LLM that is created by Facebook and it is hosted in a service called Grok. Okay, so basically from my experience, I've seen that, you know, the response is much more faster compared to OpenAI's uh, and also it is free. So uh, we'll definitely explore that as well. So without wasting any more time, let's jump back to our VS Code. So he right here, you can see that I've created a folder called Chatbot and uh, I just named it as basic chatbot. Okay, so these are some very standard imports that I've done. The only thing that I've done differently is I've used the grok uh, chat model, which lets us access some of these llama models. So if you want to know where, you know, where I pull this from, I can just go to chat grok. Okay, that is going to be a chat model inside of Langchain. So I can just click on this thing, I think. Uh, let me go to this particular class. And you can see that this is what we have to install. Okay. So just say pip install langchain dash grok, and then we just need to set the API key, right? So this is going to be the name of the API key. You can, you can set it by going to grok.com. Let's go to dev console. And then, uh, I think, yeah, you right here in the API keys, you can just go ahead and create an API. Okay. So that should be it. And I'm just going to load all of the environment variables. Okay. So we have all of this ready. Let us now go ahead and build out this very simple graph. So, um, uh, so let's go ahead and build out, uh, let's think about what we need in order to run this, right? So whenever we are talking about uh, a chat bot, um, I mean, it's, it's, it needs some memory and that memory is going to be a list of messages. Right. So it needs to, uh, you know, it needs to be a list of, you know, AI message, human message, system message or whatever. Right. We are not going to be doing anything different. It's all something that we've already done before. So I'm just going to go ahead and say something like, you know, basic, let's say basic, uh, chat state. Okay. So I, I can use the type dict again and here it's going to be messages. Okay. So this object is going to have one property messages and I can use the same annotated and I can say this is going to be a list of messages. And then how are we, how are we going to, you know, append uh, a new message to the existing list? We can use, uh, you know, the concat operator that we've seen before, but uh, land graph also provides this method called add messages. Okay. So if I hover over it, you can see that it merges two lists of messages, updating the existing messages by ID. So you can see that this is also something that we can use. Perfect. All right. This is all that we need for the state. Now let's go ahead. And what's the next thing? Let's go ahead and build out this particular node right here. Okay. So I can call it chatbot. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, I can use this basic chat state. This is what we, I mean, we, this is going to be the state and this is going to be the type of it. Right. So what do we need to do here? So all that we have to do is, uh, you know, we are going to get a list of messages from the start. In this case, it's going to be very simple. The list is just going to have one human message. It just needs to take that list and then invoke it in the LLM, right? So all that we have to do is let's return the, uh, this is going to be the, um, the, the structure of the state, right? So here, uh, all that we have to do is let's go into the state. Okay. This is going to have the messages inside of it. Uh, okay. So how do we do it? So LLM dot invoke, and then we can pass the state right here. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, and whatever is the response is going to be an AI message, right? So we're passing, we're passing the entire list of whatever conversation, you know, history that it could have. We're passing it all inside of this 
and this is going to return an AI message and that also needs to be an array. Okay, so this entire thing is going to return the AI message and that needs to be an array so that two arrays can merge together. So we have to do something like this. Okay, so I really hope that makes sense. So the chatbot node is done, right? So now let's go ahead and create our state graph. Okay, so that we can actually add all of these nodes. So we've already created the chatbot node. We just need to add this thing and then connect it and set this as the entry point. All right, so uh, what we can do is we can say uh, graph equals state graph. Let's pass in this particular uh, schema. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and add all the nodes. So in this case, it's go just going to be the chatbot node. All right. And then we can also set the entry point to this chatbot. And then finally, uh, we can also add an edge, right? We can add the edge from chatbot to end. Okay, as simple as that. So we've added this as the chatbot node, we've connected this and this together, and we've set the chatbot node as the entry point. Okay, so now all that is left is to compile the graph. So let's go ahead and compile. And next up, we want to write a for loop, right? So this is something that constantly requires the users, you know, um, we need to be able to basically have a conversation in the terminal, uh, like a very similar, like a chatbot, right? Like how we would talk to, you know, Claude's interface, web interface or ChatGPT's interface, that's how we want to talk to it, right? So in that case, we can just go for the while loop, right? So inside of this while loop, we want to first add an end condition let's say if the user were to say exit or you know something like that we need to come out of the loop or else we just need it to continue looping right so in this case i can just say user input i'm first going to collect whatever the user is typing in there i can use the inbuilt method input method and uh, the message i want to basically show in the terminal is just user something like this right all right and now i can check if the user input okay so is one of you know it could be many things it could be you know either exit or end or buy or something like that okay and okay something like this so if it is any of these things i'm just going to break okay that is it if it is not the case then we just need to invoke the graph right so i can just say app dot invoke and we have to pass in the initial state right here and the initial state is going to be the messages and right here uh, you know, initially we need to pass in the human message, right? So we need to pass in the human message and that is going to have the content, but we are going to get that content from the user message. Okay. I hope this makes sense. Now I'm just going to, you know, uh, I'm just going to say result of the entire, you know, this thing. And finally, we are just going to print the result. Okay. So it's very simple. Uh, on every single iteration, we're, we're going to restart the entire graph. It is very similar to just stopping the program and starting it again, right? So it's just going to start chatbot end. Okay. Another while loop start chatbot end. Okay. So let's come back and let's run it and let's see if everything is working fine. So, you know, I can, uh, say something like, hi, I'm Harish and great. You can see that the graph has completely executed once. So it started from here. I passed in the human message. Hi, I'm Harish. And then coming down here, you can see that in this list, we have the AI message, right? The AI message saying, hello, Harish, nice to meet you. Is there anything I can help you with, right? So it only has one human message, one AI message. So we start off with one human message. It comes here, it adds the AI message to the list and then it ends it and then it shows the result. Very simple. Right. But if I were to, you know, do something like, you know, if I were to, let's say, ask, okay, what's my name? Okay. What do you think would be the answer? Right. Uh, because we are restarting the graph. Okay. This is going to be the initial state that we're providing, right? This is going to be the initial state that we're providing. The AI does not have context about what my name is right now. Okay. So if I were to press enter, okay, this is where I put it. And here you can see that. I don't have any information about your name. I'm a large language model. Okay. So there is no actual memory maintained guys. I really hope that you understand what's going on here. Every single time the iteration of the while loop is running, we're starting the graph afresh. There is no memory at all. There is no persistence at all. Okay. 
and also if i were to you know say something like you know what's the weather in bangalore let's say i mean it's not going it's not going to be able to understand it's not going to be able to give an answer i am not able to access real time information about the weather in bangalore right there is no tools available for the llm to use either right so uh, in the next uh, i i hope you understood what are the limitations of this particular you know basic chatbot in the next section uh, we will introduce the ability for the system to access the internet okay so that is one thing that we'll do it's very simple it's very basic but once we have both of that then we'll have then we'll introduce persistence we'll introduce memory and we'll see how to do that okay so i'll see you in the next section